It's actually remarkably easy to get rid of that gunky digital noise from your footage these days, and I'll show you exactly how to do it in this video. Now, we'll be working in DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. There is, of course, the very good and very powerful free version, but if you are on the fence about paying for DaVinci Resolve, this might be the tool that kind of pushes you over the edge there. It's very good, very powerful, and really simple to use. I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus, uh, and I'm a professional editor, professional colorist, and in my work, I'm always kind of looking for ways to speed up my workflow, uh, improve my process, make my videos look as good as possible. So I'm very happy to say that this video is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is a super easy to use subscription-based service that gives you access to millions of digital assets that you can download and use in your projects right away. I'm talking about things like stock music, uh, video templates, stock footage, and we'll see some stock footage from Envato Elements in this tutorial as well. Make sure you click the link in the description below to check out Envato Elements today. But right now, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve Studio and check out those noise reduction tools. I've got a piece of footage here. It's very dynamic, nice and cinematic. This is from Envato Elements. Really love this piece of footage. We've got great contrast, we've got great color. I don't wanna do anything to it. I'm very happy out of the box. What I do want to do though is get rid of some of the digital noise. Now it's not too bad when you've got the flare up here, but if I go to the end of the clip, we're in complete darkness because he throws this flare away. And if I zoom in here, let's just uh, get a nice place to look at and just scrub through a little bit. You can see all that nasty digital noise happening, uh, particularly in the shadows here. That's kind of what I'm looking at in the water here, the back of the car. It's, uh, it's distracting, it's not nice. So we've got a nice clear view of what we're trying to clean up. And we're going to go down here into the Motion Effects tab in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now we're in the Color page, and this is the Motion Effects tab. On the left here, you've got Temporal Noise Reduction, and then in the middle, Spatial Noise Reduction, and then Motion Blur on the right-hand side. We're not gonna worry about Motion Blur today. Temporal Noise Reduction is basically uh, where DaVinci Resolve, uh, with the use of its AI and Neural Engine, analyzes a certain amount of frames around the frame that you're looking at to work out if things have moved in between frames. And by that I mean, has a subject move, has a car move, is there something that's supposed to move in the frame versus something that's not supposed to move? And what do I mean by that? Well, if I scrub my little mouse on the timeline here, all the noise is moving. So if you go down here into frames and you go to, let's say three, that's gonna analyze the three frames around the frame that you're looking at to determine what's actually moved. It's going to say, well, this, this part here, that's a human. This part here, that's a car. But all of this gunk, that's noise that shouldn't be flickering around. And so that is what we're going to target right now. Underneath frames, you've got motion estimation type, faster, better, or none. Faster is obviously faster, less processor intensive. Better, it's a little bit slower. It's more processor intensive, but you get a better result. So in my opinion, hit better. Number three, better, and then motion range, you've got large, medium, or small. That's about how much motion is in the scene. Small, I would use if you've got barely any motion in the scene, like we do, but you're also locked off on a tripod. Uh, on our shot here, we've got barely any motion in the scene, but we are handheld. You can see everything is moving at all times. So we'll go to medium. Large would be if we had handheld and you had someone running through the frame. And then underneath here, you've got luma and chroma in the temporal threshold. This is where we start dialing it in to try and get rid of all this digital noise. So I'll zoom in again so we know what we're working with. And I'm just going to click on the numbers here and drag to the right. And the reason I do the numbers versus the slider is you get just a little bit more control. And basically I'm looking at the image to see when that noise starts to disappear. It should happen in real time for you, depending on how uh, you know beefy your machine is that you're working on. And what you wanna do is you wanna go way further than you think you need and then you bring it back down. So I've gone all the way up to about 30 there. I'm gonna bring it back down and start to reintroduce it and see where that comes back in. And it's coming back in around nine. So I'm gonna leave it at around 12, I think. Now making sure I've got my node selected here, I'm just going to hit Command D to show before and after. So that's before, that's all this yucky digital noise. And after, it's basically cleared all the way up. Now it's still there a little bit, so what can we do to smooth that last little bit out that the temporal noise reduction hasn't been able to pick up? Well, that's where spatial noise reduction comes in. Now I'm gonna to go to a different part of the scene here. I'm going to go where it's nice and lit. And what you can see around this area, basically we've got a lens flare happening from uh, an actual flare in this case. We've got lens flare from the actual flare. So we're gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna come back down to the shadows that we're looking at. And we're looking at how we can clean up this part of the image. 
Spatial noise reduction, we want to go mode faster because you know temporal noise reduction is already doing the heavy lifting. We just want to clean up a little bit here. Uh, you can play with these settings depending on your shot, but for this shot, I know what's going to work. Radius small, that's again about the amount of movement that's happening, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And then spatial threshold. Luma and Chroma are linked in this. I'm going to unlink them. And for this one, I want to change the Luma value because I know that this noise is happening because of this lens flare and the light change. Now, if we were getting a lot of RGB kind of artifacting, that really distinct video noise that you get in the shadows on cameras, like say for instance, like uh, some of the older Sony range would often get a lot of digital RGB noise, particularly in the red. So you get a lot of dancing kind of red uh, artifacting that you know doesn't look very nice. That's what you would use the chroma slider for. For me, we're gonna use the luma slider here. So I'm just gonna grab that and start moving through. And you'll see it just starts to soften everything out. It's not removing, it's softening. But what that's also doing, you'll see if I zoom out here and then just zoom a little bit back into our guy here, it's starting to soften him as well. So I'm gonna move it to about four or five because that's looking really good there but we want to just get a little bit of his edge back in there as well. Because if I go off and on here, we've gotten rid of the noise, but we've also gotten rid of a little bit of detail on his edges, particularly this arm here. That's what I'm looking at. So on our node, we're going to hit option S and we're going to add a new serial node. Then down here in our blur settings, we've got blur radius. It's 0 0.50. We're just going to grab this and pull it down to 0 0.47. And you'll see it's just added a little bit of detail back into his edges here. Now, if I zoom all the way out and select both of these and hit Command D, you'll see there it's done a remarkable job. It has softened out a little bit of the smoke here, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's have a look in another part of our shadows. This is on and this is off. So you can see just how much noise it has cleaned up in these shadows here. That's with it off and that's with it on. Beautiful. Now we don't want things to look too plasticky. So the last thing that we can do here is we can add another serial node and we can just grab some film grain and drop that on. I'm going to go with a 35 mil 400T. I'm gonna play with the grain size a bit here, but I will zoom in just to sort of see what we're, you know, <laughs> what effect it's having. Play with the texture just a little bit. Grain size, pull it down, I think. Uh, pull the strength down a little bit. And then we're just going to the global blend at the bottom and we're just going to blend blend that down a little bit because you know we made we made an effort to get rid of all that noise we don't want to introduce too much back in but what we do want to do is just add that nice bit of realistic texture uh, that kind of aesthetic texture so that's our off and that's our on let's zoom into the shadows here or into this part of the light that's off and then on off and on. I think we've done a fantastic job in not too much time at all. That is how easy it is to use the spatial and temporal noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve Studio to get a really, really good result in not too much time at all. Let's just look at this one more time before we go. How much of a difference that makes. Mwah, that footage looks perfect now. Make sure you check out Envato Elements in the link below. I mentioned them earlier on in the video. And also, while you're at it, click the red button below if you're not already subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. We're bringing you content daily, not only in editing, not only in color grading, but things like graphic design, web design. There's heaps of typography stuff in there as well. We're making sure that you can upskill for free uh, right here on YouTube. So make sure you get subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. And until next time, happy editing.